Libra friends and welcome to your horoscope for August of 2020 where Libra this month is actually quite lovely because although the western portion of the chart is pretty heavy for you this year this is a time this month where the eastern sector gets some power and I love that for you because it means it's a little bit easier to make changes or to continue to make the changes that you've been wanting to make not to mention we've got high retrograde activity going on so the pace of life has slowed just a little bit but with a, a pretty nice chunk of the eastern sector being ready to go you can push forward for what does Libra want right and push things in that direction it's a really nice energy to be working with not to mention your ruling planet Venus is going to move to the top of the chart into your career house this month that is lovely Venus is magnetic she likes to bring things to us and definitely work in a really benefic kind of way so let's take an exploration around that in just a second. First, I want to tell you that the eat and greets are definitely continuing on here in August. These have been fun. I hope they have been beautifully informative for you as well. This month, we're welcoming Glenn Mitchell, Kay Taylor, Kathy Rose, Susan Miller. Hopefully you've seen some of her horoscopes. She'll be here as well. Laura Nelbondian, Clarissa Dolphin will also be here to talk about vibrational astrology because you said you wanted to hear a little bit more about vibrational astrology. So she'll be here and we'll connect as well. And August 7th through the 9th, there is a free astrology summit I'll be teaching at and I would love for you to join me there. The Astrology Summit of Power and Purpose check it out in the description box down below 17 different astrologers we're bringing you just you know like a mid-year bump up some inspiration some empowerment we're talking about astrology so whether you're new you've been doing this a hundred years whatever the state of your astrology knowledge is you can just come and get the tank filled a little get get encouraged and have a little umph as we go into the second half of the year so i hope to see you over there on the 7th through the 9th of august okay all right, let's jump in and talk about what's happening this month. So at the beginning of the month, we're going to have a full moon in the energy of Aquarius. Now, this is going to light up your fifth house space. The fifth house, the first thing I think of in the fifth house is joy, pleasure, play, children. It's August. If you have children, there may definitely be th some things happening for your children. But also the fifth house is a space of conception. We conceive children here, but we conceive new ideas, new businesses, new plans, ways to take those hobbies and turn them into something else. We take a risk in the fifth house. So as this full moon is happening, it says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. There's going to be a shift that becomes available in this house. A part of the shift that I see here that we can bring into question is where do you need to have some maybe unconventional behaviors or something that doesn't fit in the norm of your routine in order for you to have success, right? Let's just take going back to school for an example. Maybe the children are all going back in an online fashion. And this means, you know, going forward, there's going to have to be some not normal for us behaviors that we bring into the schedule and that we bring into the whole of what we're doing in order to be successful. Take that same concept and apply it to what this full moon is shedding that big old block of of light on so that you can see what can I do that maybe adjust my behavior a little bit outside of my comfort zone but ultimately allows me to be very successful in this area and that could mean for some of y'all that there is some dating happening and they are kind of unconventional people or maybe you're ready to stop dating your type because it's not working and you say let me be a little bit more open-minded here it's a really brilliant energy okay on the 5th, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Leo, lighting up the 11th house space for you. And this is the tribe. You know, I've got that page on Facebook, find your tribe. Who are your people? What are the conversations you want to be having that light you up? You got to have the right kind of tribe to support you to be able to do that. But the 11th house is also friends social groupings, organizations, your long range plans and goals live here as well. Mercury in Leo is putting fire in the mouth essentially, right? Because we have Mercury being about communication. Leo wants to express itself in a pretty big, bold way. And it doesn't always have to be loud, but it is certainly from a place of joy and self-expression. So in these areas, you know, 
Where are you expressing yourself? Where are you really showing up with your own special sauce and you're adding your opinion, you're adding your voice, you're adding your magic, you're adding your art to the tribe or to the groupings or to organizations that definitely could use your voice as well. On the seventh, we see Venus, your ruling planet, entering into the energy of Cancer. So coming to the tip top of the chart and Venus loves to bring a little money. She loves to bring a little bit of money so you could maybe see money or a promotion or an opportunity that is benefic benefic to you at the top of your chart. And it's nice because you wouldn't necessarily have to be starting something brand new here or anything like that. It's not always about tear it down, start new. This could just be, you know, you've made a home in your company and now you're starting to see ways that the, the money can come into you. But I also feel like that because it's Venus and because it's the 10th house, this is just so good for your reputation, whether it's your reputation at work, your reputation in your community, in your tribe, or what we know you as, it just gets this really nice magnetic pull of Venus helping you out here. Definitely could be some romance at the office as well. So make sure that you're keeping that in the appropriate bounds or doing what you need to do to keep that ethical, okay? On the 15th, we've got Uranus taking a retrograde in the energy of Taurus, a fellow Venetian ruled energy. This is in your eighth house. Now, as Uranus, our planet of surprise and hey, I'm going to get you out of the rut, innovation. As he goes retrograde here in your eighth house, it's literally asking you, what do you need to do, Libra, to be financially free? What do you need to be to do to be baggage free? What do you need to do to be fear free in order to have that area where Libra can just be Libra? You can live, you can be free. You can be your, your own unique self. It has value. Maybe you even need to be free of something in your material environment because it's holding you down instead of lifting you up. So there's a lot of question about your freedom. And from now until January of 2021, this Uranian energy is going to shake you out of this rut in this particular area so that you can be free. If there are relationships that need to break up, if there are financial connections that need to be broken down, um, this is definitely going to clear the way for you because we want freedom, not feardom, okay? On the 19th, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Leo. So again, putting some emphasis in the tribe, plant your seeds of intention. Do you have the tribe that you want? Are you participating in your tribe? What are your long range plans and goals? I mean, what are your long range plans and goals and designs. What do you want? Mercury is here. Express, plant your seeds of intention in the dark here so that this moon can help this grow over the next four weeks and ultimately over the next year. So what do you want in your social life going forward? You're a social creature, Libra. What do you want here? Make it the biggest, make it the best, and make it something that just brings you joy, okay? On the 20th, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Virgo. On the 22nd, we will see the sun moving into the energy of Virgo. This both lights up your 12th house space. So you bring light, heat, life, vitality, motivation, movement, also, Mercury is perfectly comfortable in Virgo because it rules this area and it's bringing it to the most quiet area of your chart, the place that we don't necessarily see, but there's certainly stuff happening. In the energy of Virgo, who's our natural healer, are you ready for a spiritual experience? Are you ready for a spiritual awakening? This energy, Virgo, is coming here to make this area the most, the best that it can be for you. Highest integrity, right? Right? most organized. You need to get organized in the places that we can't necessarily see. My researchers, this is great for getting your research organized as well. But also in the 12th house here, something that I'm thinking about is the analytical ability that comes with Virgo energy. Have you had a pattern of behavior going on? This Virgo sun is going to light it up. Mercury is getting you attuned to what's going on. Is this a pattern in your business? Is this the pattern in your life? Is this a pattern in your home life that maybe you can take a look at and say, ah, that is, that's not actually serving me very well, right? Virgo is an earth sign. Look to some of the things in your material plane and in your mental plane to see where maybe a reorganization or maybe um, the details of how to get something done can become available to you at this particular time. No time like the present to get organized, especially as we get ready to head into the fall. You want to have your little ducks in the row and Virgo will definitely help you do that, okay?
All right, Libra, I think that July was a good month. I feel like August also is gonna be a good month. Take advantage of the Leo season on you to speak up for what it is that you want and you desire. All right, guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Know that I love you and I'll see you next month. Bye, everyone.